Welcome back to Retro Break and welcome to my tour of by far my favourite game shop in the UK, Vintage Gamer. If you didn't see it last week, I did a pickups video from there and this week I'm going to go into loads of detail, every little nook and cranny in the shop I'm going to explore and share with you guys here right now, so let's get straight into it. Channel sponsor Bifrost Bridge Studios is going to be showing pages from their upcoming comic every two weeks over on their Patreon. So if what you're seeing now seems interesting, check the link in the description and go and join them over on Patreon. And now let's begin the tour by first taking a look at this cabinet here which was right at the front of the shop. There's some really cool stuff on the top there which we'll get back to in a minute but first let's take a look inside. You can see some Atari Lynx and some Atari Jaguar games there as well as a really cool ZX Spectrum 3 Plus on the bottom. We also have a 32X on top of that Mega Drive there. I really want a 32X, so maybe if it's still there next time I might go back and pick that up. I also love the iMac on the top here, doesn't that just look so cool? And now we're looking at the first cabinet which is right next to the door at the entrance. This one was full of really cool Dreamcast games. Of course Sonic Adventure 2 at the top there, absolute classic, you've also got Shenmue, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which is actually still one of the highest rated games of all time on Metacritic. And then on the next shelf down we've got some Sega Saturn games. I was really tempted to pick up Astol actually, which was one there on the top left. Of course a really nice 3D control pad for Nights into Dreams. I don't actually have it in the box, so that was also something that I was really tempted to get. And a really cool looking Dreamcast arcade stick there as well. And then in the cabinet on the other side here we've got loads of really cool DS and 3DS games as well as loads of Pokemon games there loose. There's red, blue and yellow for the original Game Boy. And then on the next shelf down here we have some more DS games as well as a quite rare new 3DS which is the Style Boutique one. He said although it's rare and it's worth quite a bit it'll probably stay there for quite a while because it's not really something people will be that interested in. And then in the next shelf down this was the one that I was most excited to look at. As you can see, Biomotor Unitron's up there, as well as the Smartcom, and I did pick both of those up, so take a look at my pickups video that I did last week if you want to see my thoughts and opinions on them. And then at the bottom here are a load of NTSC GameCube games, which is really interesting to see. You don't usually come across American games in UK stores that often. And now we're going to spin the camera around to take a look in another cabinet that was at the other side of the entrance here. This one had a lot of really exciting things inside. We're starting off by taking a look at a few boxed N64 games. You can see some really great games in here. Mystical Ninja Star and Goemon, Pokemon Snap, uh, Super Smash Bros, Ocarina of Time, Banjo-Kazooie, all of the classics. And on the next shelf down you've got a load of really great SNES games as well. They even had Super Mario RPG and Earthbound there on the American SNES which was really cool to see. You never really see those in UK shops either. And then on this next one down there was some Game Boy selection here. Some really great games for the Game Boy there as well as some of the Konami collections. I kind of wanted to pick them up but if you saw my last video you'll know that I already spent a lot of money and hopefully some of this stuff will still be here the next time I go and visit. Loads of really really cool stuff on this shelf as well including some Japanese games, there was a Game Genie there as well. And then on the bottom here there's the PC Kid game that I picked up on the GameCube. Behind that there was a Mr. Driller game as well for the Japanese GameCube. Uh, Twilight Princess HD and then on the left of the entrance here we have these two shelves here and there's another shelf just to the right of this which I'll show you as well in a minute. On here you have loads of boxed NES games so let me know if any of these NES games catch your eye. There were some really great games there and some great SNES games as well and then on the shelf next to that you have PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 3 games and it was really difficult to get footage from this because you can't really tell from here but all of these PS1 games were double stacked so that means you could take the first row away and there was still a whole row of completely different games behind there as well so I'm sure you can see how I can spend hours and hours in this shop just looking through the incredible amount of stuff that they've got on show and on the next shelf over we have double stacked PlayStation 2 games. There was loads of great games on here, let me know if you spot any really interesting ones. And then further up on the shelf here at the top we have some PlayStation 3 games. Once again let me know if you spot anything interesting. And of course even the drawers underneath were full of games. Here you can see this one was full of PlayStation 1 and PSP games as well. I did actually pick up some of those PSP games but I forgot to show them off in the last episode. 
And now on this shelf here on the other side of the room we have some N64 games, some Game Boy Advance games and Game Boy Original and Game Boy Color. These were double stacked as well and unfortunately I didn't get to show what was on the back of these ones. And before we take a look in the next room there was a few other cabinets around here. Unfortunately the lighting wasn't very good down this side of the room so it's a little bit grainy but hopefully you can still see the games okay. There were some mega CD games in there. I, my eye was particularly drawn to Night Trap at the back, I'd love to get that one day. There was also a boxed Game Gear there as well as a few Saturn and 32X games. And then on the bottom here we have something really interesting, we have some Amiga CD32 games. I don't really know anything about the Amiga 32 at all, so let me know if there's anything interesting there that you'd like the look of. And then in this shelf here we've got some PC Engine games and Doom on the 32X back there. I would love to get Aero Blasters, I've got sidearms there on the PC Engine. The next one down was a bit of a random one, it had some Xbox and PlayStation 2. And then on this side we've got some really good Mega Drive games in here, including Ristar and Zero Wing, two brilliant games. Sonic and Knuckles with the cardboard box in good condition, surprisingly. Dynamite Heady there as well, Toe Jam and Earl 2, uh, Virtua Racer, loads of great games in here. Mega Bomberman, I was quite tempted to get that as I don't actually have Mega Bomberman for some reason. And then here we are, here is the most amazing room in the entire shop. This one is just full floor to ceiling of PS2 and PS1 games. There's a few DS and 3DS games at the top as well, but just look at this insane amount of PS2 games here. It could You could easily spend all day just looking through this room if you liked your PS2 games. As you can see, these are all double, sometimes triple stacked as well. It's just insane. There's so many different games here. You could probably find every game you're possibly looking for on the PS2. Mixing the games in here with the ones in the cabinets outside as well. So, have a quick look at all the games that are on display here. Let me know if anything catches your eye. There was a few games that caught my eye. I picked a few up last time I was here, but this time I didn't actually pick up any PS2 games, although one of my friends that we met there did pick some up. So, let's take a look and see what games catch my eye from this selection before we move on. So, Super Buster Move, that's something I've always wanted for the PS2. That's got a hilarious front cover, by the way. If you ever see Super Buster Move, have a look at the front of that. And as for games I'd be interested in, let's have a look here. SSX3, that's a fantastic game. You've also got, I saw Juice 2 at the bottom there. Puyo Pop Fever, I picked that up on the GameCube, but I saw the PS2 one there as well. Feel free to pause this video at any point as well, because I'm sure this is going too fast to see everything. Even I'm struggling to keep up, and this is in slow motion. So, onto the PS1 games now. Let's have a look and see what's interesting on here. I see the original theme park there, right in the middle. I absolutely loved playing the theme park back in the day. One of my favourite games of all time. Uh, also here, interesting, V-Rally. I do enjoy the rally games, so V-Rally's good. Driver at the top there, that's a good game. There's loads of good games here. Let me know which games you guys like the look of. It's going too fast. Civilization 2, I didn't know that was on the PS1. That'd be interesting to see how that plays compared to the PC version. Alone in the Dark there at the top. Shadow Man, that's another great game. I loved playing that on the Dreamcast back in the day. Never played the PS1 version, so I wonder how different that is compared to, compared to the Dreamcast. Beyblade there, that was actually one of the last games released for it, as far as I know. I can see Echo the Dolphin and Crazy Taxi there on the PS2. Great games, I saw Ridge Racer Type 4 in the corner. And here we have some DS games and some Master System games as well. So once again, let me know if you spot anything interesting. I'll have a look on the Master System shelf here, see if there's anything I would have liked to pick up. Super Space Invaders, that might be interesting, see what they did with the Master System version of that. The Xenon 2 Mega Blast, that's always a great game, no matter what system you play it on. Of course, Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, both fantastic games on the Master System. I actually prefer Sonic 1 on the Master System over Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive, believe it or not. And I also know a few other people would agree with me as well there. There's also some boxed N64 games at the top there. You can see Turok 2, V-Rally 99, and there's some uh, Sega Saturn games. And above there as well, you just might have been able to make out there was some uh, Atari games. And I can't really make out what else is up there. Acorn, BBC Acorn games. There's some SNES games in the box there. And over here, this was at the top of the shelf that we just looked at. Here's some uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color games. So let me know if there was any up here. These ones were kind of out of reach, so I zoomed in to see these. So hopefully you can read and see them all okay. And then spinning round now on the other side of this amazing room here, you have a whole wall of Mega Drive games and some more box SNES games at the top there and a load of Xbox games at the bottom as well. So here's a look at this wall. It goes over the doorway there. 
so you can see all of the Mega Drive games going all the way to the end of the room and all the N64 and SNES games at the top there as well. And here's a quick look at all of those games on the Mega Drive. This isn't all of the Mega Drive games by the way, we'll get to some more later on. There's actually a whole other shelf of Mega Drive games behind this as well. But let me know if you see anything interesting on here. Some that caught my eye just at a glance, Sonic 2 of course. The Mega Games collections are always really good if you're, if you're trying to collect Mega Drive, they're always really good starting points. Uh, Super Monaco Grand Prix, that's a really good game on the Mega Drive. We've got the Jungle Book there, Mega Games 2 as well, Alex Kidd. And then at the bottom, there's a whole load of original Xbox games. And this was something kind of weird that my friend Jack found while we were having a look around. This plugged into the Game Boy Advance and it was actually some sort of speaker, which doesn't really look like it would work that well. And now here's a look at the room at the back. This is quite a small room, it's more of a, a cupboard, but it is a lot tidier than the last time I went in there. So I actually spent about half an hour rooting through all this stuff. As you can see, it's all stacked up. There's boxes full of things. You could easily spend a good few hours just looking through all the stuff in here. They had loads more PS1 games, so if you were looking for PS1 games, you can see there's so much here. I didn't get all of it out for this video, but definitely come down and visit the shop if you want to have a rummage around. I really do recommend that you guys go and visit. They're really nice people that work there as well, and it's so fun to just rummage through all of this stuff. You can see there, they even have some big box PC games, which is really cool to see. And even though I don't actually have a PC at the minute that's able to play a lot of these games, it didn't stop me picking one up last time I was there. I picked up Magic Boy for the PC. And on the other side here, you can see in these plastic boxes, there was loads of cassette tapes for different systems and some PlayStation 3 games there as well. And these drawers were really fascinating for me as well. Inside here, you had loads of really cool little things. There was instruction manuals, there were some posters and leaflets. There was uh, game guides for all various different games. This is where I actually picked up all of those Game Boy manuals that I showed off in my last video. If you didn't see what they were, there's a link in the description so you can go and check out all the pickups. And here's something that I was really excited to find. I think I actually gasped out loud when I saw this. This was the box that I was looking for for one of the daytime games that I'm trying to collect all of them. And they actually gave me this completely free of charge as well and I could not thank them enough for that. That was so nice of them. You can see me put it on my stack over there. That's something else that I do whenever we go to the shop. We always make a stack at the counter and then just ask them to add it all up while we're looking around. And if you're into your PS3 games, here's another stack of PS3 games here and some more PSP games at the bottom there. And here's the Game Boy manuals that I picked up while I was there. You can see there was actually more than the ones that I picked up, but I actually just got the ones that I actually needed for my collection. I could have been greedy and picked up the whole lot, but I thought I'm just going to get the ones that actually mean something to me. And then in the top there, there was a few other instruction manuals and random bits and pieces. And here's some more big box PC games. There's some really great ones there. There was the theme park one there. I actually had that one as a kid. Let me know if any of you watching collect big box PC games, that would be interesting to know. And in this drawer here was full of Atari 2600 games. I do have a 2600, but for some reason it won't turn on anymore, so I'm looking to try and either get that fixed or to get a new one at some point. And then there's some more games stacked up there. And then in these boxes here, I didn't actually look through those. And then we come back out of that room now and take a look into this corridor here. And the first shelf we're looking at, this is what I was saying, where the rest of the Mega Drive games are. So let's take a closer look at what was on these shelves here. So we've got Rise of the Robots, an absolute classic game. I'm sure everyone will agree that's a 10 out of 10 game right there. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker in the top though, that one is a genuinely good game. There was also Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament, one of my favourite 16-bit games. Let's see what else is here. Quite a few that I haven't played before actually. There might be a few that I'd be interested in picking up. I heard uh, Megalomania is pretty good, so let me know what you guys think of that one. There's The Lion King, that's a good game on the Mega Drive. Echo the Dolphin, of course, a classic. Uh, six game cartridge, I think that's the one that you used the light gun for. And of course, once again, all of these games were double stacked as well. And unfortunately, I didn't get footage of what games were at the back. But that's even more of an excuse to come down and check this out for yourselves, just to see what else was there. So on this next shelf down here, let me know if you saw anything. Echo the Dolphin, Tides of Time. The sequel to the original, that's a good game. I see Taz there, that was one of my favourite games back in the day. And the original Micro Machines in the corner. And then on the shelf next to it, we have another load of Master System games as well. And a few more big box PC games at the bottom there. I would love to get Strider on the Master System, I kept seeing that one pop up. Also the Mickey Mouse game I saw there as well, they're always really good on the old Sega consoles. 
and the Mega Games collection for the Master System 2. I don't actually have the Mega Games one. And there was Transbot there as well on the bottom right. A lot of people really love that game. And at the top here there were some really nice boxed systems as well, including some Mega Drive 2s and an original Mega Drive. And there's even more boxed games and systems on this side, including a Master System, some controllers, the Powerbase Converter, the SG Pro Pad, which is by far my favourite controller for the SNES. And then over here we have a Sega Saturn joystick, two of them actually, the Japanese one and the European one. And there was a Commodore 64 in the box that I saw there as well. And this is the shelf on the other side, and this is all Japanese games. So we have some Japanese PS2 games there, and on this shelf we have some Japanese Mega Drive games, and a whole load of Japanese Dreamcast games as well. And the great thing with Japanese Dreamcast games is that they have Japanese on one side and English on the other. So if you're ever looking at games like this, always turn the games around, and then you'll be able to see what the English names are. There was also some 3DO games there, and some more Mega CD games. And then a whole load of PAL Dreamcast games on this shelf below. I picked up a few of them which I showed off in last week's episode. I think they were already gone by the time I filmed this. And then at the bottom there there's some PAL Sega Saturn games. Nothing too exciting. I mean I've already got most of the good games for the original Saturn now. But if any of these caught your eye let me know. There seems to be a lot of Virtua Fighter there and a lot of that Sega Victory soccer game as well. Virtua Cop that's pretty good. Manx TT Superbike. That's one of my favourite racing games. There's some good games there. There's also a Dreamcast keyboard and some more big box PC games. X, uh, Rally X Miles add-on, that's actually one that I had as a kid. My dad used to love playing that one back in the day. And then at the back of the shop here we have some more games in boxes at the top followed by some GameCube and some Wii games and some boxed Game Gear games in the corner there as well. So let's take a closer look now at some of the GameCube games that we can see here. There wasn't anything too exciting there on the GameCube and the same with the Wii really. I did pick a few Wii games up that I just needed for my collection. There was something good there if you haven't got one, that freeloader. That actually lets you play games from any region on a PAL machine so that's really useful. And there's also some DS games down there as well. Just a lot of shovelware really. I didn't really get any DS games jumping out at me. Unfortunately because I was hoping to get some good DS games. There's some more Wii games there. There are some good games there but unfortunately the games that I've got left to get are quite few and far between. So I managed to pick one or two up that I was really happy with. And then here's some more GameCube games on the other side. Once again, it is getting quite difficult for me to actually buy GameCube games these days because I think I've already got all of the good games that aren't like either shovelware or just the games that were really badly reviewed at the time. There's also quite a lot of the same game from what I've noticed here as well. So let me know if you spotted anything interesting here on the GameCube or on the Wii. And then we have some more Atari games here. I don't really know that much about Atari games, so let me know if there's any games I should be looking out for in the future. And then there's some Game Gear games there. Again, I don't really know that much about the Game Gear. And then there was some CDI games down there. You don't see those very often. I didn't actually get a good look at them. Maybe next time I'm in the shop I can take a better look at some of them. And then in this cabinet here we have some rare PlayStation 1 games. All of the Final Fantasy games there in that side. And then we have some really rare and expensive PS2 and 3 games in this one. So take a look at these. There was a really cool Resident Evil Chainsaw controller. Of course, I always want to get that. Maybe one day. And then on this side we have some Wii U games and some more Wii games. I wasn't exactly sure why these Wii games were in the cabinet in particular because they don't really seem to be anything special. This was quite cool though. This is the Bayonetta 2 Special Edition for the Wii U that comes with this really nice box. So maybe that was something I could have thought about getting. And then you come inside the shop now, you can actually go behind the counter. They're very kind and actually let you come back here and have a look at all the stuff as well. So you can see on the wall there, there was loads of SNES and N64 games. And then on this side here, they have some more rare PS1 and PS2 games. I did pick up some really good games from behind the counter as well. I saw Midway Arcade Treasures there on the PS2. That is a great set of some arcade games that Midway did back in the day. And then there's some more N64, SNES, uh, Master System, Mega Drive. Basically every system you can think of is on this wall here. And they're all really good prices as well. They do really good prices on all their games. So I did spend quite a bit of time back here just picking a few games up off the sides here and putting them down on the counter. Definitely go and check out the shop if you ever have the chance to. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed it, please consider checking me out on Patreon to join all of the amazing people at the bottom of the screen right now. That's it for this episode though, so I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye.